Hello there, it's Tim, Golf 5, Tango Mike. And if you're new to the channel, then great to have you on board. And think about clicking that subscribe button and the notification bell to tell you about any future videos. And of course, if you are somebody who's been with me before, uh, great to have you back. For those of us, especially many of us in the UK, uh, it can be very difficult to think of ways in which to get a band like 40 metres to work and to work reasonably well if you've got a small garden or yard. Now, I've got a traditional British garden, not very big, about 30 foot one way, 30 foot the other, about nine and a half by 10 metres long, something like that. So getting 40 metres in can be a challenge. But uh, last summer, I came up with a really good idea. At least I thought it was, and I found it worked quite well to get 40 metres and other bands in my garden and squeeze it into a uh, what turned out to be about a 9 metre or 29 foot horizontal space. So if you fancy, let's have a look. So the antenna I used was an N-fed half wave, and it's around 66 feet or about 20 metres in length. And for this uh, particular antenna, it's fed with a 49 to 1 transformer and you get 40, 20, 15 and 10 metres as, as harmonics of the 40 metre half wave. The bottom right hand corner, you can see I fed the antenna a few inches above ground uh, with a 49 to 1. The wire itself went up that 7.5 metre pole to the top of a fibreglass pole, so 7.5 metres up and then went up as an inverted V. Now there is a, another pole which isn't drawn there in the middle which supports the apex of that inverted V, in, uh, inverted V, that's right. Uh, the apex is at nine and a half meters above ground level, so it was a 10 meter fiberglass pole. So I got four and a half meters going up to the apex and five and a half meters coming back down, as you can see to the left there. And there was another pole on the far left of the, the garden, which supported the final bit of wire coming down, only came down about two and a half meters, so it ended up being about five metres above ground level. So on 40 metres, the antenna does about as well as you'd expect a dike pole of that sort of height to do, really. Uh, it's about nine and a half metres off the ground at its apex. So, you know, it's only about a quarter wave off the ground. So it's kind of a cloud warmer, but does pretty well, uh, did pretty well around 1,500 to 2,000 miles. It's about two and a half thousand kilometres uh, away from here or around Europe, really. Very strong uh, around the UK for an E into G and did okay over to uh, North America a few times too. So if we look very briefly then at the current and also the far field plot as well. So the current pattern of the antenna on the left hand side, you can see it's a good mixture of vertical in red and horizontal in blue. This is taken from MMANA, by the way, the, uh, the modeling software. On the right hand side, you've got the far field. And as you can see, a lot of the RF is uh, shooting up in fairly high, high angles. But again, you see around 1,500 to 2,000 miles around, it'll do pretty well. And uh, peak gain, as you can see, is near the top there. But you've got nice sort of 2.5 to 3, 3.5 dB gain at those sort of angles. And when the props in, you'll still work some DX. But you can briefly see there the, uh, the azimuth pattern at 5 degrees off the horizon. Not great gain. Uh, the left-hand pa um, pattern you can see there shows the in the direction of the shortened vertical part of the antenna, the left-hand side of the antenna, which you can see the top right-hand corner of the picture of the antenna there. And we've got minus 11 dB and minus 7.5 on the uh, on the part of the on, on the side of the antenna uh, where we have got a full vertical part, the seven and a half meter long vertical part. So. You know, overall, a uh, reasonably performing antenna for 40 metres, not too shabby. Now, 20 metres is where the antenna begins to shine a little bit. Let's have a look. So, the current pattern, now this shows us now that we've got uh, two main uh, current maximums. But remember, in the 40 metre pattern, only have one, as you'd expect from a half wave. So, on the 20 metre current pattern, on the right-hand side, you've got the vertical element, where we've got a, a nice current maximum, about a quarter wave up there. And again... On the left hand of the uh, inverted V, the one that's going down, uh, again you've got a nice little, uh, little peak there, so uh, a decent antenna. The far field plot is also encouraging too. Now 5 degrees off the horizon, we've got a peak gain of minus 3.2 dB. To put that into some sort of context, uh, your average quarter wave vertical will have an omnidirectional pattern of about minus five and a half to minus six dB. So at its peak gain, this antenna is about well, getting on for about two and a half to three dB better off than a quarter wave ground mounted vertical. So not too bad at all at five degrees. So some reasonable DX properties there. 
And indeed, if we look back again, we've got the, uh, in addition to that azimuth, we've got the far field plot on the far right hand side of those diagrams there. And uh, we can see we've got a peak gain at around 26 degrees at 4 dB. So overall, a very, very reasonable looking antenna for 20 meters. Uh, the sort of um, shape you'd see for a dipole sort of just below the half wavelength, which is basically what its antenna is. Let's look at 15 meters now then. And 15 meters is where we start to see some, uh, well, to me, uh, quite uh, surprising elements to this antenna. Let's take a look then. So uh, we can see, first of all, we, on the left hand side, we've got the current pattern. This antenna is now one and a half wavelengths on 15 meters. So you'd have three main uh, RF current maximums, if you like, the three main bits of the antenna, which will radiate most of the RF. So we've got on the right hand side, we've got the main vertical element where we've got a nice um, maximum uh, current maximum there. And on the two um, inverted V bits, uh, yes, inverted V bits there, we've got a, a couple of nice bits of horizontal RF too and a little bit on the end as well, that little vertical bit there on the left hand side. Now, moving across to the far field diagrams, there's two there of course, now the left hand of those, that's the middle of the three diagrams you see in front of you, is the azimuth pattern at five degrees off the horizon. Now you'll notice we've got red and we've got blue patterns there. Now the red pattern is the vertical polarized RF and the blue is the horizontal. What's noticeable is for both, especially the vertical, the red line, is that the left hand side of the antenna, as you look at it there, okay, has far greater gain, especially for the vertical red line, and even if you look at it for the horizontal blue line as well. Don't forget we're looking at the middle of those three diagrams, the center diagram, okay? So there's a bit of front to back happening there. Why did I find that surprising? Well, I found it surprising because the left-hand side of the antenna is actually the bit where we have the, uh, the, uh, the shortened, if you like, vertical element coming down. It only comes down two and a half meters, and that's the end of the antenna. It's not the seven and a half meter long uh, vertical bit where it basically the antenna is fed at the bottom. All right, so we've got quite a bit of gain on that left-hand side. If we look then at the uh, what we call the street view, if you like, of the antenna, 15 meters, I'm just looking at the vertical polarization here, okay? Uh, if we look there, you can see in yellow, I've shaded where the far left hand side of the antenna is, where we have that shortened vertical element, if you like, coming down. And if you look at the, the bubble of RF there, there is noticeably more going towards that side of the antenna. Now, of course, some of that would come from the the, the main vertical element on the right hand side anyway, of course. But I think some of it as well is being helped by that little, little bit of vertical uh, coming down on the left hand side in yellow there. And maybe a little bit as well from the, from the inverted V. So it's noticeable that we have a little bit more gain going towards that end of the antenna. And in fact, if we look over the top of the antenna, like a bird's eye view, uh, the way we can see this is that in the middle of that, you've got the, like the blue dot right in the middle of that diagram there. That's basically, the, if you imagine that blue dot is the very top of the seven and a half meter pole, you're flying over the top of it. And then the blue line going up from there, uh, straight up through those numbers, is literally the top of the inverted V, all right? And as you can see, look, that red uh, line with the yellow bit on the top of it there, right in the center, is literally what's happening to the vertically polarized RF for the antenna. It's all been pushed towards that end of the antenna where the, uh, where the inverted L, if you like, is sloping towards. Which is interesting, isn't it? And in fact, uh, the yellow bit there, why I've shaded that in yellow, is because that is basically where we have at least or better than minus 6 dB gain. Which was which is what I've already mentioned before is the sort of uh, typical gain you get from a ground mounted quarter wave vertical antenna. So then we have here uh, an antenna which has actually got the capability of performing very well. It's a bit directional as you can see, but if uh, for example you want to aim towards that side, and for me that's uh, the way I've got it, it's aiming towards the United States. So actually for me that's quite quite handy really. And of course you've got the the, the RF coming off both sides of that as well. So South America, North America to the West and the Southwest for me is actually uh, pretty decent. And with 10 meters, we see something similar happening again. Now remember this antenna is now two full wavelengths on 10 meters. 
So you've now got four bits of current maximum, four parts of the antenna where we have a fair degree of RF being uh, radiated. Let's take a look at that and have a look at the far field plot as well for 10, shall we? So, uh, on the left hand side, we can see the current uh, pattern again, or the, where, where, the, you know, where the main RF is being emitted from the 10 meter, on 10 metres of this antenna. Um, on the right hand vertical bit, we've got two main uh, current maximums there. And also, luckily for me, right at the very apex of the inverted V, horizontal, nice bit of horizontal RF coming off there, and a bit towards the end as well, half coming off the inverted V and half coming off the, uh, sort of the, um, the little vertical part on the far left-hand side. Switch to the right of the screen, we've got the far field, all right, and again on the left we have what we call the azimuth pattern for this antenna. And if we look at that in more detail, Again, similar to the 15 meter antenna, uh, to the 15 meter band on this antenna, again, on the left hand side where you see the letter Y, that is basically the part of the antenna where, again, we have a little bit of that vertical element coming down. On the other side, we have, uh, opposite to that, we have the, uh, the full 7.5 meter vertical bit, which is fed at the bottom with the, with the 49 to 1. And again, we see a bias, a greater gain opposite the vertical part of the antenna. Uh, we can see there with a five degree takeoff, we've now got peak gain of minus 0.8 dB in that direction, in the same direction as the 15 meter vertical. And again, don't forget, minus 0.8 dB, that's getting on now for five, not far off, well, just about five dB better than a ground mounted quarter wave vertical. So it's quite directional, like the 15 meter antenna, it's directional where the inverted L basically becomes at the top part of the inverted L. But I also think, this isn't a traditional inverted L you see, inverted L is basically when you go up and you go horizontal or maybe you slope a bit. Now with this, we're going up, we're doing a bit of an inverted V, which is higher, and then we go straight down a little bit, but not all the way down, obviously. And it must be something to do with that little bit that comes down that's enabling us to get a little bit more gain than maybe we normally would with, a, with an inverted V, sorry, an inverted L uh, antenna. So interesting, isn't it, that we've got that little difference with 10 and 15 meters. I suppose the fact that both of those bands in terms of the height of the antenna, we were way above, or quite a bit above, half wavelength, which will help with the gain, certainly. But interesting to see, I think, how as we go higher in, 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 our, in our frequency, as we go to work the higher bands with this antenna, we've got that more pronounced gain towards one side, in this case, the side away from the vertical bit, we're going this way. So this, when we go towards the horizontal bit of the antenna, we've got more pronounced gain, which is interesting. So if you shape the inverted L to go in a direction of where you want your RF to shoot, and basically off the sides of that is where it will go, as well as being vertically polarised, then um, this antenna could actually do a decent job for you. Of course, the beauty is we've done all this in a space which is half of that of uh, for a 40 metre dipole. So plenty of wins here, I think. And once again, the NFED half wave shows its versatility. You know, it can be set up in a variety of ways. And uh, this isn't quite your traditional inverted L. It's a bit quirky because of the inverted V bit. Um, but, you know, overall, it seems to do okay. And it worked very well for me last year. And I'm looking forward to trying it again in the near future at my QTH. And if you want to find out just a little bit more about NFED half waves, then feel free to click up here for a bit more information. But overall, it's been lovely to have you with me. Take care. 73. We'll see you again. Bye-bye.